That's awesome. <laughs> it was like a treasure hunt. <laughs> White people's heads. Never really? Now yeah, that's history. I'd heard about a crew of female pilots in the 1930s who gained notoriety for doing some incredible things up in the sky. Marcia Strang gave me the lowdown. In 1936, the Flying Seven were a group of women who uh, were all pilots at the time, and they realized there's only seven female pilots in all of British Columbia. They wanted to band together and to let people know that, you know, women can be pilots, women can do anything. The ladies decided that they wanted to help the war effort. They offered their services to the military and the government to fly, but the military wouldn't be accepting female pots for another 40 years. So they got thousands of pamphlets that helped support the boys overseas, and they dropped them all over the city of Vancouver in their aircraft. With their campaign, they raised enough cash to buy eight training aircraft. We should go over the city of Vancouver, and you can point down and show us exactly where that happened. Absolutely. The aircraft's very maneuverable, so it, yeah. it can just move it back and forth. So this would be like going this way. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing a steep or turn down. to the right. Now we're climbing like crazy. We're going to put it into a spin yeah. out of control completely. The plane would be flipping through the air. <laughs> OK, OK. I better leave the flying to the pros. Like this fine gentleman, Harry Pride, over 90 years old and still flying strong. When we were over Vancouver, Marcia pointed out where the leaflets were dropped. <laughs> Harry's more than a pretty face. He'd known Roly Moore, one of the Flying Seven, really well. I started flying in 1945 with the Aero Club of BC, and Roly was the instructor that took me up in the Fleet Canuck and taught me how to fly it. Roly sounded pretty badass. One of the things I, I thought was really interesting about Rolly was here it was in the 1930s. She rode a motorcycle, she had a little sports car. She didn't want to just sit around and be a regular lady, she wanted to have adventures and do things, and that's what she did. I got a chance to fly with her on her, on her last flight. She sat there and watched through the whole flight with this big smile on her face, and she was a woman of grace, but at the same time, she had that sparkle in her eye, and she would do anything she wanted, and you were not gonna get in her way. She was a very brave, woman who tried all sorts of stuff in airplanes, which a lot of men wouldn't do. Aerobatics, formation flying, ribbon cutting. You know, there'd be two sticks out here with a ribbon and Roly would fly along and hook it up with the wing. Like literally close, cut close, the ribbon. Close to the ground. Roly won a bunch of awards for her feats over the years. No wonder the Flying Seven were such a force. One of the events they staged was a dawn to dust patrol. The crack of dawn, uh, one of them took off in an airplane and she flew around and before she landed, another one took off in her plane and started flying and they continued on through all seven of them continually through the whole day until sunset, showing that there's an entire day with women in the air and how safe and competent they were. They wanted to make sure that everyone knew a woman's place was in the sky. These days only 6% of pilots in Canada are women. So we've still got a long way to go, but there's been a ton of progress since the Flying Seven took to the skies in the 1930s. I think she was the strongest leader in opening up aviation to women. There were lots of others who were involved, but to me, she was the star, you know. That's what I think. 